Hi, this is Flavia from Planet Tuna, and in this video we're going to take a look at what researchers have been discovering about tunas and depth. Tuna live in the open ocean, and this makes them very difficult to study, or at least that used to be the case. Now, scientists are able to put tracking tags on them that record data and then detach from the fish, float to the surface, and send the data to a satellite. This way, researchers can follow the movements of a fish that is thousands of miles away. This is called telemetry, and it is also used to study migrations and many other things. To help you picture some of these discoveries, let's imagine a water column that goes from the surface of the sea way down to deep waters. As you can see, there's more light near the surface and the water's warmer. In deep water, where the sunlight doesn't reach, it gets cold and dark. On a summer day in the Atlantic, the surface waters can be around 25 degrees Celsius, and at around 100 meters down, it's below 13 degrees Celsius. The first thing we're going to look at is reproduction. Let's zoom into the picture we just saw. Hmm, Got to remove this. Okay, now I'll zoom in a bit more. We know that the reason tuna reproduce near the surface is because their larvae need light in order to see their prey among the plankton and because they need warm waters in order to survive. So conclusion number one, during the first month of life and during the spawning season, all tuna hang out in the top 20 to 30 meters of the sea. On this same channel, we have a video that describes the life cycle of the bluefin tuna in more detail, so check out the link in the description below if you want to know more. More basic behaviors, feeding and thermoregulation. Let's go back to our first drawing. What do tuna do when they're not reproducing? In other words, what do they do most of the time? Scientists have observed that tuna spend most of their time at a depth of between 100 and 400 meters, although some species, such as big eye and bluefin, can dive down more than 1,000 meters. But all of them make frequent trips back up to the surface. These changes in depth are for feeding and for controlling their body temperature, in other words, for thermoregulation. Let's look at a day in the life of a big eye to understand this better. This species is a good example because its behavior follows very regular patterns. Our big eye feeds during the day. As the sun rises and the waters light up, it descends to cold water below 300 meters to feed on the prey that accumulates in the so-called deep scattering layer, or DSL, or CPD in Spanish. But spending time in such cold water requires a lot of energy, so during the day the big eye will rise to the surface at times, mostly in order to warm up. At night, it spends most of its time near the surface, and at dawn, it starts its routine all over again. Although this is the general pattern, there are always exceptions. There's a very interesting one in Scandinavia, where it's common to see tuna feeding near the surface during the day because there are large schools of herring there. Why go down to cold waters? And before we finish, we need to answer a key question. How can tuna dive so deep? It's not a simple thing to do, not even for a fish. This is thanks to three things. First, their body shape is a hydrodynamic marvel that slides easily through the water. Second, they have the highest proportion of red muscle of any fish, which allows them to swim longer without getting tired. And third, tuna have an amazing ability that helps them fight the cold in deep waters. Unlike most fish, their internal body temperature is higher than that of the surrounding water. It's usually just a few degrees more, but bluefin tuna can be as much as 18 degrees Celsius above the temperature of their surroundings. Warmer muscles allow them to swim more efficiently, and they also warm their brain and their eyes so they can see their prey better. Besides, their eyes are large to begin with, allowing them to capture more light, which is an advantage for detecting prey in deep water. This is especially true of the big eye, which is, of course, where it got its name. And finally, researchers are able to come to all the conclusions we've just seen thanks to global initiatives such as the European Tracking Network, where they pool the data from the tracking devices in order to do broader, more global studies. This way, we can get a much more accurate picture of the behavioral patterns of tuna and other aquatic animals. Want to know more? How fast they swim? How tuna navigate? Follow us on social media and on planettuna.com. Stay tuned!